Well, for those of you who are unfamiliar with our software, this is what the interface looks like. You have the modules down along the left hand side. To the right hand side, you have your model in the viewport. All the modules have a very similar look and feel about them. And by default, the software opens up in the model at module. I move down into the uh, energy section, which is where we're going to be looking today. And in the Apache Sim section of this, Apache Sim is the dynamic simulation engine, which you can see you can access down the bottom of this Apache view. And the Apache dynamic simulation engine is the backbone of our energy simulations. And what we can do is we can represent our systems in a simplified way using these Apache systems here. So looking through these um, Apache systems, you can see there's a whole range of Apache systems available. And you can see here there's a fan coil unit, for example. In that fan coil unit, we have a number of efficiencies represented to us, seasonal efficiencies. So uh, heating plant seasonal efficiencies, cooling plant seasonal efficiencies, and then an auxiliary energy value, which looks at the pumps, fans, and controls. And so these systems are very suitable for very early stages of design, not so much suitable for the later stages in design where more detail is required. For the more detailed uh, analysis of your systems and your energy consumption, you would need to be using the Apache HVAC module. And the Apache HVAC module is a very flexible tool with many benefits now for engineers. What we have here is a similar kind of look and feel to the other modules. You can see along the top of this screen, we have a number of icons. Uh, and down below that, we have this uh, model workspace where we can build our networks. And so what we're able to do is we're able to go in and we can create systems from scratch using kind of a drag and drop approach using uh, the components here along the top here in these icons. Or what we can do is we can go and we can select from the uh, prototype systems library that we now have available here, which we'll talk about in a little more detail later on. I suppose the first real benefit of the software that you can see straight off is because we can go and drag and drop items in here it allows us to build up our systems as they have been designed in reality so you're not restricted to maybe rigid systems like perhaps other vendors would be supplying so you don't have this kind of rigid VAV system or fan call system that you have to stick with and make work for your particular system and compromise really in terms of the realism of your model in our Apache HVAC module, you're able to go in and create your systems from scratch or adapt your systems from the system library quickly and easily. Um, and you're able to go and make up your systems so that they are as close to your real design system as possible. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly go in and show how easy it is to make up your systems from scratch if you want to. Now, this isn't as popular to do as it would have been in the past, simply because we have that system library there available for you. But if I just start off by placing an inlet and an outlet, and for those of you who have used our software before and are familiar with our software, you'll notice that one of the new features is that we can now add as many inlets and outlets as, as we want. Whereas previously, we were only able to use one inlet and outlet, which made it a bit of a nuisance. So we can go and create um, as many networks as we want, individual networks as we want within this file. And I'm going to include a room into this network. And I'm just going to call this room Open Plan Office. And I'm just going to have a look through the rooms that are available to me. And I'm going to choose Open Plan Office 1 as being the room that I'm going to assign this system to. I'm going to just put in some of the duct ductwork associated. And the next item I'm going to add in is our fan. And I can see I can add in a fan here from choosing the fan left intake from the icons in the toolbar. So I just choose my fan. And what I can do is I can call this my supply fan. And as I choose it as being a supply fan, I can now go in and I can choose the amount of airstream heat pickup from this fan. So in many cases, the fan will be in line with the airstream. So you'll typically have an airstream heat pickup of about 100%. 
You can also then add in your curve data and you put this in in ascending order. So I'm going to add in a few rows here where we can add in uh, maybe five points on this curve. And so I'll just put in the flow rates. So I might just put in, I'm going to keep the flow rates pretty low here. Now, points to note on this fan is that this fan that I'm putting in here in the network is not controlling the flow rate in my system. All it's doing is it's acting like a meter, if you like. So it's metering the flow rate that's going through it. And based on that flow rate that's going through it, it will look at the figures I'm putting in here in terms of the curve, the pressure and efficiency and flow rate figures. And it will be able to predict the power consumption that this fan will be consuming at that point on the curve now. And so it'll be able to predict the energy as well that this fan will be consuming. So as I say, it's more of a metering device allowing us to predict our energy consumption. That's the point of it. Uh, we are able to control our flow rate in a different way using flow controllers. And so I can just click uh, OK on that, and that's my supply fan in place. The next thing we'll do is we'll set up our heat source and our chilled water loops. So as I look along these icons here, I can see I have a heat sources section and a chilled water loop section. The heat sources section is a new icon that we've just recently added into the software. And in here, we've added in a number of different heat sources. We have a hot water loop, and we also have a generic heat source. We also, aside from this heat sources icon, have the ability to add a third heat source, which is the air-to-air -air heat pump as well. The first of these is the hot water loop. And the hot water loop just allows us to go and model our heat generators involving hot water. And if I was to add that in, you'd see I'd have a number of options, which we'll come back to. Another heating source is our generic heat source, which allows us to model a number of devices, such as water or ground source heat pumps, for example, um, or other types of generic kind of heat sources that maybe don't include a hot water generator. And finally, as the name suggests, we can go and add in this air-to-air -air heat pump if we wanted to. And you can see here that we can add in a number of items representing the performance of this air-to-air -air heat pump. So you can put in your source temperature, your COP, and your output. We will select the hot water loop option for this initial system. So as I click the add button, I can go in here and I can see I've got three tabs for this hot water loop. I've got the hot water loop tab, I've got a preheating tab where we can model a number of preheating devices, and we've got a heating equipment set. And within this heating equipment set, I can choose from two different types of heat generators involving hot water. One of them being the hot water boiler, and the other being the part load curve. And for those of you who've used Apache HVAC maybe in the distant past, you'll be more familiar with the part load curve, where you can go in, and if you were to add a part load curve boiler, you'd be going in and adding in the part load curve in terms of load and efficiency here. The pump usage isn't input here anymore. You put in your pump information within the other tabs of your hot water loop. And so this hot water loop is allowing us to go and model more of the details of the hot water side of our hot water loop. So the item we're going to choose is this hot water boiler, which will allow us to go in and choose editable predefined curves. So instead of having this part load curve where we can go in and define our part load curve from scratch, we can go in and we can add in a hot water boiler and choose from a number of predefined curves. In this case, we may choose a non-condensing boiler, okay? And in this non-condensing boiler, you can see there's a boiler model description there as well, which can aid you as you're doing your calculations. I'm just going to call this hot water boiler, and I'm going to set the heating capacity to being 20 kilowatts in this case, because it's only a small network, and I'm going to set the boiler efficiency as being 90% efficient. And I'm just going to click OK on that. Now I have one boiler in there, which if I want to look at it in more detail, I can see it's at 20 kilowatts and 90% uh, efficiency. And so I'll leave it at that for the moment, because I can add in more than one boiler now and sequence them. 
and I can add in preheating devices as I've said earlier on and I can look at hot water loop in more detail such as setting up my hot water pumps and the likes. The next item we'll look at is the chilled water loops. When I look at the chilled water loops I can go in here and click the add button and when I click on the add button I can once again see this chilled water loop with a number of tabs where we can model in more detail the water side of this chilled water loop as well as the generator itself. In the chilled water loop tab we can put in items such as the pumps that are associated with those uh, with that chilled water loop. So we've got chilled water pumps and we've got a primary circuit and a secondary circuit pump and you can put in your pump power at a rated speed as well as the pump heat gain to the chilled water loop as a fraction. In this case we're not going to edit either of those. All we'll do is we'll change the actual pump curve from being a constant speed pump to a variable speed pump and these can be edited as well by you the user. So we're going to change it to being a variable speed pump as we have done and in terms of the chilled water supply temperature we can change that from being reset type of outside air temperature to having no reset in this instance. I'm going to go into my chiller set and I'm going to select my electric water cool chiller. Once I'm in the electric water cool chiller section I can select the cooling capacity curve, I can select the water temperature dependence curve and I can select the part load dependence curves defined by DO2. We can add in the chiller capacity and the COP. So you can see here the chiller capacity which I'm going to set to 15 and I'm going to put in the COP which I'm going to set as being 4 in this case. So I'm going to click OK and so I have this chiller in place now which I should have named as being chiller 01. Click OK on that and as we've said earlier on, we can sequence our chillers as well. So we can easily sequence them. And in this case, we're going to copy the existing chiller I've made. And I'm just going to rename it as being chiller 02. I'm going to keep it as being the same capacity and the same COP. And I'm going to just sequence these so that uh, one will have priority over the other. I'm going to click OK there. Now that we have our heating and cooling sources in place, we can now go and define our heating and cooling devices. So in this case, we choose a heating coil. And I'm going to call it heating coil. Keep it as being a simple coil model. I'm going to put in the system type as a hot water loop, as we have defined. And I'm going to put in the capacity as being 2 kilowatts. And I'm going to put in the oversizing factor. I'm going to leave that as being 1.25. And I'm going to click OK on that. Then I can add in my cooling coil. And I'm going to call that cooling coil. And what I can do is I can set the capacity of this cooling coil to being 2. And I'll leave the oversizing factor at 1.15. The next item that I'm going to include is an outside air economizer. And so I'm going to choose a mixing damper set here. I'm going to add that in. And I'm just going to say economizer. I'm going to put in a minimum flow rate of 40 here. So you can see 40. So I've got 40 litres in there in the minimum flow rate. And this is to meet the fresh air requirements in the space. So the minimum flow setting means that the air passing through the left branch will never drop below 40 litres a second, which in this case is the outside air. So if I just click this, you can see here, there's the left-hand branch, and that's going to be the outside air. So this is where I'm never allowing the minimum flow rate to drop below 40 litres per second. I'm going to pair this uh, mixing damper with a return air damper set, and I'm going to add in my ductwork in between. Now that we have all the components in place, we need to add some controllers. and put in an extract fan. I won't go into as much detail as I did with the supply fan. If I just had a constant volume system, I would just have one point on the curve here. If I had a variable volume system, I obviously have more points on the curve to put in. So in this case, I'm just going to put extract fan. And I'm just going to click OK. I'm not going to go into as much detail on that one. So we will start by um, adding our heating and cooling coil controllers. So to do this, I'm going to choose an independent time switch. 
and I'm going to set this as having a dry bulb temperature of 14. Click OK. And I can do the same for my cooling coil and say I have a dry bulb temperature of 14 and click OK. So I have these two time switch controllers in place controlling our off coil temperatures to 14 degrees C. And the next one I'm going to add in is a flow rate controller, which is going to be an independent controller with sensor. And I'll just add this in here and I'll pop it on so it's sensing the air outside the room. And I'm going to be sensing or controlling the flow rate rather. And I'm going to control the flow rate to be 300 liters per second. So I'm going to have a proportional control on this. So this means that we can vary the flow rate in line with our sensed temperature. So I'm going to put in 40 liters per second as being the minimum. And I'm going to put in the sensed variable here is going to be dry bulb temperature. And I'm going to put my set point for that as being 24. I'm going to put in a proportional bandwidth of 2. I'm going to leave that as default. So just naming this flow rate control. Click OK. I can next set up a control to control the outside air economizer. So I'm just going to put in a time switch here, which will allow me to control this damper. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a, a target mixed air temperature of 13.5 degrees. So I'm just going to say economizer, dry bulb temperature, and I'm going to set the target as 13.5. So in this example, the controller will modulate the damper, mixing the outside air and the return air to get as close as it can to achieving that target mixed air temperature of 13.5 degrees. Click OK on that. So the next thing to do is now that we have everything in place, we have all our components in place, I'm just going to save this as being demo 12. Click Save. So I'm going to go back into my Apache SIM module, the backbone, if you like, of my energy calcs. And I can now integrate the Apache HVAC module in so that I'm able to use the uh, system that I've made up in Apache HVAC and connect it to one of my rooms and I'm able to link that in and integrate with that so that that more detailed system can be used. And so I can quickly run my simulation. So our simulation has now run through and we can easily look at the results for our network in Vista. So our results analysis module down along the left hand side there. So what I can do is, in my room, so this room that we've run our analysis or our system on, in Apache HVAC we had chosen the open plan office 01. And so I have that selected now. And what I can look at is, say, the room air temperature here. And I can just select a graph. And I might select a particular day of the year. So maybe I'll select July the 17th, for example. When I just select uh, July the 17th, I can then go in and add in the outside air dry bulb temperature. I can look at the HVAC system air supply. So you can see that there is air being supplied into this space. And it's being supplied into this space once the air temperature in the space is going above 23 degrees as we've set up in our flow rate controller. So once the temperature in the space goes above 23 degrees, that flow rate is coming on and is varying in terms of flow rate based on the temperature in the space. So as the temperature increases, so does the flow rate. I can also go into the energy section. So in that case, we were looking and interrogating one room. I can move from the load section into the energy section, and I can look at my fan electricity consumption. And so for that particular day, if I wanted to look at it, July the 17th, I can see that fan power corresponding to that flow rate that we've got is coming on and I can see the energy that's being consumed by that fan based on our fan laws. So I can select the system options from the room groupings as well. So you can see here we've got a system option. When I go into this system option, I can then select my Apache HVAC system. And when I select my Apache HVAC system, I'm now able to select any point on the network and interrogate it. So what we might want to do is look at the heat picked up by the air from the fan. So as I look at air temperature, and as I look at a point before and after the fan, I can see that for that 17th of July, that we have got heat being picked up by the 
air from that fan as we've said a hundred percent of the heat pickup will be available from the fan to the air so you can see the difference there you can also see either side of the cooling coil in July you can see the air as it would have been brought in from outside and how it's been reduced there down to the air temperature of 14 as we would have expected and we can open a new graph for that particular day if we want to and we can look at perhaps the components rather than the nodes and what I can do is I can look at that particular cooling coil and I can see for that particular day I can see the amount of sensible cooth being input by the cooling coil to the airstream I can also move back into the room view and I do that by just going to my drop down and choosing on rooms and selecting my heating and cooling coil load as well as the boiler and chiller loads so heating coil load and my cooling coil load and I'm able to see those throughout the year and see what the load is on them so I have to see the heating and cooling coil load there in the graph what I can also do is I'm able to go and I'm able to look at my boiler and chiller load there and I can also go into my energy section I can easily go and look at my Apache HVAC boiler energy but my Apache HVAC chiller energy Apache HVAC distribution fans pumps heat rejection fans you can easily graph these and put them in monthly and summed totals so as I look at this I can see my monthly and annual totals shown to me in this table and so you can see that throughout each of the month the different energies associated with each of these plant items we can also look at CO2 emissions and if I look in CO2 I have to look at my CO2 for my system I look at the split between the fuels used for heating and cooling so I'm going to look at my system natural gas CO2 my system electric CO2 and my total system CO2 and they're represented once again monthly and a summed total for your annual uh, CO2 emissions